We'll start with our tweet of the day from just some dude named Sean on Twitter. <laughs> Quote, Dan Mullen should be in jail. And that is basically a little harsh, but that was reaction, JB, Florida Gators man. And also Thomas Schaefer, our new producer, is a Florida Gator. To Dan Mullen not using Damian Pierce enough, because Damian Pierce was one of the headliners, Jamie, a big-time winner. I don't know if Dan Mullen should be in jail, but there, I guess there's a reason he's not coaching the Gators, and perhaps some of that is he didn't use Damian Pierce enough, and Damian Pierce might run away with that job. What do you think? I mean, we're going to find out if Lovey Smith should probably follow suit, right? Because if Lovey Smith doesn't do the same thing also. Uh, John McClain, who no longer covers the Texans, but he's still involved around that team. Uh, he almost said the exact same thing on Twitter this weekend, that if if uh, Damian Pierce isn't the starter for week one, the Texans aren't doing the right thing with the roster. And so, you know, 9.8 yards per carry. Uh, you know, you saw the explosiveness on the 20-yard run. Only one target, so you have to see what he's going to be doing in the passing game. But in the limited role last year at Florida, he had 19 catches. And so... You know, we typically say 25 catches for, you know, a, a college running back is, is what you kind of look for. And so he was, you know, certainly on pace for that. So I, I think the upside is evident. You know, for me right now, he's the second rookie running back that should be drafted uh, ahead of James Cook, ahead of Ken Walker. Um, it's easy to look at him and say he's got flex appeal going into the season. Number two running back at points during the season if things work out his way. Now, again, he played behind Marlon Mack. Rex Burkhead did not play. And so we'll see what happens there just in terms of what they do with their depth chart. But he should be the clear-cut guy, and I don't think it's going to be close. They were playing against Saints backups, uh, so that it is something. I'm sorry if you said that. Uh, something to keep in mind. I just want to see when was that? That was a Friday game, or a sa- that was a Saturday game. Saturday game. I wonder if we had any drafts on NFC yesterday. I'm sure we did. We had 16 drafts. Let's see where Pierce went. I was oh, actually he- pretty surprised. So our our ADP 98. on CBS is starting to look like what drafts should look like. Um, so I guess a lot of you doing mock drafts, which is cool. And, and some of your real drafts, obviously as well. It's so like when you mentioned Jalen hurts, uh, before he's our sixth quarterback right now, which I think is pretty cool. Cause you know, he's not reflective of that in fantasy pros or NFC. I think, um, Damian Pierce, I was looking to see what number running back he is. Cause he's still going around pick 100, but he was around like the 36 running back, which is not so far off. I think from where he should go, I have him in, in the twenties, but, um, I still think you look at it, the fact that he wasn't like in the forties. It's kind of telling and the fact that he is you know ahead of i don't remember all the guys but he's ahead of uh, a, a decent list of running backs that you know you may have considered drafting ahead of him but um he's going to be a, a huge riser a huge winner from this weekend hopefully things just continue to build for him in, in the uh, preseason and you know you for nothing but you know going reports out of texans camp so it's it's pretty good to see once he gets on the field that it showed off are you scared by the fact that he's on the texans and that this is an offense that isn't expected to put up a ton of points. Uh, I mean, again, I'm not drafting him, nor should anybody be drafting him to expect going in to be an elite level fantasy option. But I do think that if he gets the volume, this Texans offense, I think is going to surprise people. First off, I think, you know, people think of Davis Mills as just an afterthought because of where he was drafted. No, uh, no, our guy, sure. Pete Prisco loved him and liked him better than Mac Jones, for example. Uh, going into the draft process, he had the knee injury at Stanford, you know, that kept him off the field. And so had he played, and we talked about this, I think, you know, with the quarterbacks in this class, had he come out this year healthy, he might have been the best quarterback in the class. And so, you know, mm. there, there there were signs last year of what this offense could be. You know, I like Brandon Cooks. I know we all do. Uh, I like Nico Collins. I know we all do. Um, you know, there there's there's there, there's players here. And I think there, there's enough of an opportunity for Damian Pierce to, like I said, start the season as a flex for you be a potential number two running back as long as Marlon Mack and, and Rex Burkett are out of the way. The concern would be what he's going to do in the passing game because Rex Burkett could have that role. All right, I'm going to tell you on NFC, which again is the high stakes leagues, more high stakes leagues. Um, there were 16 drafts yesterday or from the four. What's today? Today's the 15th. From yep, the 14th we're halfway to, through August. Yeah. From the 14th to the 15th, there were 16 drafts. So Damian Pierce on average is going 98th in those drafts and he he running back 37. So here are the running backs that are going just ahead of Damian Pierce. And you tell me if you take him over them, I know we said some already, but would you take Damian Pierce or James cook? Pierce. Yeah, it's Pierce. Damian Pierce or Rashad Penny and Ken Walker. Pierce. For now, I still have Penny ahead of Pierce. Kareem hunt ahead of Pierce. Uh, Pierce. 
as long as there is six plus game or Pierce with the Watson suspension. Damian Harris, Devin Singletary. Pierce. Those guys. All right. So Jamie's higher on Pierce. Okay. Uh, how about Dave? Give me a winner. A winner from the weekend is, well, we're probably going to talk about Jalen Hurts a little later, right? I talk about him now. I was impressed. Yeah. I was impressed. Uh, he didn't miss on a throw. The only throw he made that might have been considered a little bit off is the one that he actually scored a touchdown on. And I'm not going to complain about it. Um, loved his first throw. He left the pocket and threw a really great pass to Quez Watkins, who made a nice catch along the sideline. And that's to me, that's a sign of development. The fact that he was able to keep his eyes downfield, they didn't take off running when the pressure was on, and he made a great throw on the run. Uh, he recognized coverage a couple of times where uh, the Jets dropped back like seven DBs, and on one of them he checked down to Miles Sanders. I thought Sanders looked okay, uh, better than okay. I thought he looked good. And and on the second one, he hit Quez Watkins on a, on a crosser, and I, I think he's getting it now. And the, the concerns I had about him as a passer are dissipating, and I'm, so he's not I'm more excited to take him now. There's still two names above oh, him in my stopped. rankings. He never said he was getting benched. He, he did. Never, he, he never said he was going to get benched. He said I he said was there was the chance. This is months ago. I thought no, was there was the a chance. Our, that he no, it was in the middle of August. The start of August. He said it to you. I didn't. I, I, okay. He but. was talking about a player probably. He was taking the under. So no, was he was not. He said, my concern with Jalen Hurts was there's a chance he'd get benched. He said that beginning of August. Uh, there is a chance it's different that he's going to get benched. And I, you know what? I, I forget. Well, it. that chance is now that. negative a billion. Okay. I'm uh, you know, here's, here's a it's different. okay, Jamie. I don't mind. I, I said it fine. Here's but I'm not saying question. it now. He's not getting benched now. Not unless he like has his right arm has to fall off. Hey, but, but here's the, you know, it was, it was the Jets. It was the first team Jets, but it was the Jets. I don't care. He what still, he did. still was you recognizing coverage. Yeah. Jalen Hurts. I don't think the Jets awful. did anything crazy. The, the the best thing about it, six or eight straight passes. Yeah, right. It came nah. out snowing. That was that doesn't that was what you want to see from trusting your quarterback, knowing that what we saw at the end of last season is not going to be what happens again. They are going to throw a lot more than they did at the end of last year, and that's going to be fantastic because he was great at the beginning of the season. He was the what number one, number two fantasy quarterback for the first six weeks of the season. Uh, no, not quite. Um, I, he was. I'll tell you in a second. I won't. I won't guess. It was up there. He was good. But I, I don't think that's an indication of what their offense is. I think that's an indication of what they wanted to start that preseason game with and get Jalen used to doing and see how he does against live defense. And I think he passed that test with flying colors. I don't think that they're I, – I, I'd be surprised if they were 60% pass this year. I think they'll be closer to 55%. That's still good. Then it's a hell of a lot better than where they were last year, which was 42% starting with that Detroit game at midseason. Jalen Hurts in the first seven games of the year before they started running the ball every play was the number two QB in four-point leagues, number five in six-point. On a per-game basis, he was number three in four-point and number six in six-point per pass in touchdown leagues. Uh, okay, how about – let's? we need to talk about more players here, so let's go a little faster here and just run down some more winners and losers. Uh, uh, go ahead, Jamie. Uh, Naeem Hines for me. Uh, you know, just the fact that – no Jonathan Taylor, that he was the guy to start the game, that they didn't just use him in a passing downs role. And so if something were to happen to Taylor, I think they feel pretty comfortable that he could be the lead guy. Eight carries, two catches. It seemed like he touched the ball on every play, played the entire time with the first team offense. And you know what you're getting when Taylor is healthy, which is two seasons of 63 catches, uh, which I think is going to be over 70 uh, with Matt Ryan there, knowing what this receiving core looks like. So Naeem Hines, I asked you this question uh, when we were talking yesterday, Adam. I, I I think, I don't think, I know Pollard has a higher ceiling, but just in comparing the two guys, where Pollard is going in PPR, now you mind should not be far behind. And it's it's drastically different. So I'm so yeah. more encouraged by what now you minds can do this year after watching that first preseason game, just based on his role. Yeah, well, he got like every touch. Uh, what I said to you is that I feel like if, if Zeke and Taylor stay healthy, Hines is probably going to, has a good chance to outscore uh, Pollard, but if he, Zeke and Taylor get hurt, I think Pollard would crush Hines. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. The ceiling is higher, but yeah, just again, like you're looking at guys that are in secondary roles and drafting them one with the hope that the guy struggles in front of him, the other 
you're hoping the guy doesn't get hurt and struggle in front of him uh, in Taylor. But Hines, I think, is going to be a, 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 one of those guys that just crushes his, his draft value, absolutely destroys it. I was in a 14-team draft, one of the Kings Classic drafts. He went in round nine. I'm going to give you some names of running backs that went ahead of him. Jamie, you tell me if you would take Hines or the running back I'm about to name. Melvin Gordon. Hines. James Robinson. Hines. Daryl Henderson. Hines. Tyler Algier. Hines. Damian Pierce. Pierce. Okay, so one out of those guys. I'll give you one more. James Cook. Hines. Okay. You're dunking on Hines. Should be a sweet deal for you. <laughs> Should be. Okay. How about uh, Did you Travis? Take one of those guys? Other guys? Uh, no. No. Oh, yes. Wait. Yeah, I did. I took Pierce. Okay. It was uh, before his preseason game. Travis Etienne, you had as a winner too, Jamie. You like what you saw from yeah, him? Yeah, absolutely. The, I mean, you know, great. just the fact that I think what – What's going to end up happening is he'll probably end up splitting rushing downs work with James Robinson and should destroy him in passing downs work. And, you know, Dave mentioned this, you know, just to see him back on the field was exciting just to see the fact that, you know, they wanted, I think, to get him ramped up a little bit. Nine carries, uh, two catches, I think one catch, two catches. Uh, I think it was 11 total touches. Um, and so while the the YPC was not great, um, I don't really care. I think he's going to just be explosive and fun and feel really good still about drafting him around three in PPR. When he ran decisively, he was lightning fast. There were a couple of runs where I think his offensive line did him a disservice and the Browns were crashing and he just, he couldn't go anywhere. He had a run for minus six yards. He had a run for minus one yard. So a couple of those carries just weren't great. But when he did run decisively, man, he was great. He moved well in routes. I'm a little scared about the size factor. And I think that's going to keep me from taking him in round three. Cause if you take him in round three, a little worried that you're drafting him too close to his ceiling. But if you can get him in the middle of round four or later in PPR, and I'd say round five and half in non-PPR, oh, man, I think that's great. I, I I guess where I'm coming at – this is where I'm coming out on him. I wouldn't reach for him, but if I can get him right in that that area that I talked about, I would be a very happy camper. How about uh, how about Trey Lance, Dave? You have him as a winner. Uh, just that, that bomb touchdown he threw. It's a little bit more than that. It wasn't a perfect debut. It wasn't a Jalen Hurts-like debut for Trey Lance, but he seemed a lot more comfortable, a lot more understanding of what to do when a pass rushes on him. Uh, I think the second snap of the game or maybe his second drop back of the game, the Packers were in his face. He got out of there, gained seven yards. He slid. He talked about that after the game, about how he he's almost never slid in a football game before. I think he said the last time he slid in a game, he was playing baseball. <laughs> not football. So I thought that was encouraging. I uh, love the throw and the read to Danny Gray. He recognized it was man coverage on the outside, held the safety with his eyes before unleashing a perfect ball to Gray. I think that there's room for some upside and he's really going to put defenses in a pickle once he proves in a, in, when he's got the starters out there in a regular season game that he can hit targets 15 plus yards downfield. And he plays the Bears in week one and that Bears defense looks like it's already toast. Uh, you you look at their talent on paper. It's young. Their pass rush highly questionable. He if you want to win week one, get Trey Lance on your fantasy team. I think he's going to be very very good in that first game against Chicago, and then he gets Seattle after that. Yeah, I already have to decide in one league that we that we already done our draft for if uh, if I'm starting Joe Burrow or Trey Lance in week one. <laughs> I hate that I have to make that decision. Lance, easy. Easy. Burrow has the Steelers, I think. Let me double check. He's got the Steelers at home. I'm probably going to start Trey Lance. I think it's going to be more fun. be drafting Trey Lance ahead of Joe Burrow. That's the way you win. Yeah, I would draft him ahead of Joe Burrow at this point now. Um, I Well, Ooh, wow. I, if I could only have one quarterback on my team, I'd take Burrow. Right. I would I would take Lance first, and then I'd draft a safe quarterback. Uh, yeah. as if both are there in round nine or round ten, you take Lance first. Uh, okay, um, we have a few more here. Isaiah Pacheco was a winner for Heath. George Pickens was a winner. He's a winner for, for me too. Yeah, winner for everybody. He's, Everybody's he's, all over Isaiah Pacheco now. Well, but his stats used, weren't good used, yet. He's still a winner. Doesn't matter. The fact three, that he played where he played. But they used three running backs on on their one drive. And, you know, they had McKinnon in there. They Ronald Jones. That's all you got to worry about. I'm worried about everything. I mean, how can I get any consistent? Look, if anyone's going to be consistently good here, it's going to be Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, right? What's Isaiah Pacheco mm. going to do? 
Is he going to win the job? Uh, I don't know if he's going to win the job, but he's certainly turning heads and he's certainly getting an opportunity. And, you know, he's, he's he might be faster than Clyde. And, you know, you, you see certain situations. I, I just think he might be his faster than Clyde. Um, I, I know we trained. And so, you know, you're looking at a scenario of what, what his upside could be. And, you know, Andy Reid, I don't think, is afraid to, you know, use the best player on his roster. Um, I did find it interesting uh, some, some people going through some of the, the, the formations that the Chiefs were using and comparing it to what the Chiefs typically look like versus what they have been. Um, or what Andy Reid has been, excuse me, and scaling down some of their pre-snap motion and, and stuff again. It's only preseason, but right, um, that, yeah, that you could you could see a, a little bit more of a conventional pre-Chiefs Andy Reid offense, and that could really help Clyde, you know, just in terms of how the run blocking goes. Um, but in any event, I just think you know if you're not drafting him, certainly where he's going, which is free, um, but. Like he's he's a top forty eight running back for me, and I, I think you just you know you're taking a lottery ticket with him, for sure. And that's uh, uh, just a couple quick questions here to finish up on the the winners: George Pickens or Chase Claypool? Claypool did not play. Deontay Johnson did not play. Pickens had a nice game. He caught a very nice touchdown. Uh, who would you rather have, Pickens or Claypool? Before, before we answer, Pickens I want to give our our CBS drafters credit because they've already been taking Pickens over Claypool. Well, I don't know that they're right, but I I would. Well, okay, that's fine. But but we could easily be wrong about that. I mean, Claypool could have had a good preseason game as well. Sure. Uh, but he didn't play. 